What's up guys, today we have some very exciting news regarding open source large language models. So on April 19th, 2023, Stability AI released their first language models, and they are calling them Stable LM. It seems that everyone is releasing their own language model nowadays, so why is this one so special? Well, for starters, they have released two models, a 3 billion parameter model and a 7 billion parameter model. And they are training a 15, 30, and I believe 65, and 175B is coming soon. But more importantly is the license that they chose to release these weights under, as you can see here. The base models are released under a Creative Commons license. And contrary to other popular models, such as the Facebook Llama models, we are free to remix, transform, and build upon material for any purpose, crucially, even commercially. There was a whole bunch of hype around the Llama models, uh, and they performed very well, but the models were released for research purposes only, and so if you were caught using the Llama models for some commercial application, uh, theoretically you could get sued. And uh, it seemed many people didn't care about that, but the good thing with these models is that's not even a concern. So that alone is a big deal. Even if these models didn't perform as well as Llama and were closer to like a GBTJ level performance, uh, we're still getting many different sizes of 3, 7, 15, 30, 65, and 175B, which could be used to build many applications that would be a good alternative to OpenAI's uh, APIs. But that's not all to be excited about for these models. Unlike other open source models, such as GPTJ, that has a context window of 2048, the context link for these models are the biggest I've seen for a transformer-based model uh, that is open sourced and have doubled the context window to 4096. What this means is that we can have longer generated content from these models or give more examples for few shot learning but what I'm most excited about is that we can have a bigger prompt for fine tuning. In working with models like GPTJ, I have automated some processes that just a few years ago wouldn't have been possible. And we have more than once ran against the problem of we could do more if we just had a bigger context window. Well, I'm now going to recommend that we switch to these models for problems like that. And what this means is that there are more things that can be automated now. And so those things will be automated in the near future. Unfortunately, at this time, there's not much with regards to technical reports for this model. Uh, I've seen some other people talk about this model and are disappointed uh, with the results, but I think they're used to the really big models such as ChatGPT. And uh, we will soon see when the report's out just how this model stacks up to the other models. However, we may be able to take some insight from this Y Combinator post. Uh, I guess the guy could be faking the numbers here, but they seem to check out, in my opinion. So he went ahead and took the base model, the 3 billion parameter one, and benchmarked it on one of the data sets, the data set being the multitask language understanding uh, data set and got a score of 25.6 average accuracy. And he says that he's disappointed with the results because comparing it to a FLAN T5 model uh, that is 3 billion parameters and, and also to FLAN T5 model that is 80 million parameters, it is beaten by those models. However, if we look at the performance of this non-fine-tuned model, which this ones are, these are fine-tuned, on a task, we can see that it's actually pretty comparable. If we go to the papers with code leaderboard for this data set that the model was tested on, we can see uh, models and their performance on this data set. And of course, we see that GPT-4 with a few shot of k equals 5 performed the best. Uh, but if, if we scroll down, we'll find models that perform more closely to the 3 billion stable LM model that we had and we can kind of get an understanding, at least on this data set, how the model stacks up. And if we keep scrolling down, we'll see that right here at 52, GPTJ 6B, zero shot, got a 27.3 versus the 25.6 that I'm assuming zero shot, stable M 3B got. And so only a little bit worse. 
And if we scroll down a little bit more, we see that GPT-3 2.7B, but crucially, few shot K equals five, was only 0.3 better than the stable all M. So if this one data set is anything to go by, the results seem fine to me. And at worst case scenario to me, it seems that this model will likely be between a 2.7B model and a 6B model, um, but with a context length that is double, which is huge, especially when we test out the bigger models such as the 7B model, which I expect would be better than GBTJ. So a better than GBTJ model, but double the context length, many, many more problems are now solvable with an open source model. In addition to releasing the base model, they also released a model that was tuned to follow instructions and chat uh, that they mentioned here with Stanford uh, Alpaca's procedure of getting that data set with ChatGPT, as well as other data sets that they, you can see in the readme here. Uh, important to note is that this model is not under the same license, so it's not as permissive. So probably maybe cool to play around with, but um, not something you can build a product on like the base models are. Scrolling down, they give a quick start that allows you, using the tuned model, to go ahead and chat with it. If you're familiar with ChatGBT, you're aware of things like the system message. So apparently the uh, model was tuned a similar way to how ChatGBT is used. Um, and exciting is that it seems that this model is already supported in Hugging Face Transformers. So that means it's probably pretty well, relatively easy to fine tune. And you can be sure that I will be making a video on that in the near future. Last thing I want to talk about in this video is that they hope to add llama.cpp like support to the stable LMs. So basically getting this model from the uh, float 16 format down to int four, and that would be to the point where you probably could run it with decent speed on a CPU. Uh, Llama CPP has that, but again, with Llama, it's not permissive. It'd be really cool to get C good CPU performance on a model trained on as bad as many tokens as Llama with double the context window and with a license that you could actually build products with. That would be amazing. Um, maybe a couple years away from having these models run at good speeds on our phones. They can run now on our phones, but not at good speeds. With these base models, a couple years, I, I fully expect that. So that's where I'm gonna end today's video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like. If you like this kind of content, consider subscribing as this is the kind of content I make covering the latest in AI and tech. Also consider joining the Discord for tech support as well as to just talk about things you're working on, issues you're having, and just say hi. Thanks so much for watching and please have a great day.